What's going on, YouTube? How you guys doing, man? It's game time. A little bit of deadlift action. My daughter had a soccer game today. Had an actual great goal and actually put her on defense second half to shut the other team down. So they actually tied one-to-one, -one, but I'm really proud of her um, performance today. It was a really good day for me as a dad. So I figured I'd uh, let you guys in on my deadlift workout, just kind of film it live. And um, we're going to do a little bit of rolling out right now, so I apologize for the angle of this, but, uh, you know, I don't have a camera guy following me around in my basement, so it is what it is. So basically, just going to roll out my lats, my back. I'll ask some questions between sets, you know, just uh, get nice and loosened up, man. Had boxing yesterday, Ugh. so I'm a little bit, a little bit sore, so just kind of getting it done. Get everything rolled out, lats, back, all that good stuff. Just get nice and rolled out. See if anybody even joins this bitch today. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, it's gonna be a really good workout. I'm looking forward to it. I don't think anybody's joined this, but that's okay. Let's go. All right. What's going on, everybody? It seems like people are starting to join. So it's deadlift day. Get it done. Get it on, bang the gong, get it on. Any questions you guys have, just post them right here. I'll answer them as best I can. So, there we go. So yeah, we're just gonna get some good old deadlifts. I use the hex bar. I'm wondering why I use the hex bar. It's because um, it puts more pressure on your posterior chain. Less pressure on your lower back. Um, load your quads, posterior chain mainly, so you're not getting as much hamstring issues. Um, hamstring, lower back pressure, as you do with a conventional deadlift. And as I get older, I mean, you know, stuff starts hurting a little bit more. So, you know, I'm just trying to, trying to maintain longevity while keeping the tension up, making sure I keep growing, making sure I keep making gains, and uh, making sure I stay healthy. Want to be able to, uh, you know, perform alongside the kids I train, be able to keep up with my own kids. And uh, honestly, so far, so good. So my kids want to go fishing today. So I got a limit of about 45 minutes to an hour. So I figured, you know, we'd have this ride together. You know, you guys can come with me. I'll get a workout in, answer some questions, and we'll, uh, you know, you kind of see what I do. So I'm just getting right into it, straight into hex bar. Then you'll see what other stuff I do. questions I can answer while I'm getting this weight loaded on. What's up, everybody? Can you save this live? It will be. Trying to get my kid into soccer. I play myself, but he's not really into it. How'd you do it? Aaron, let me tell you what, man. Here's my secret. I don't play soccer. I don't give a shit about soccer. Um, I'm not good at soccer, although now that I've been involved in it, I am a licensed coach. I got my 77, my 99, and my 11 v 11 license in soccer by the USSF, sanctioned by the state of Illinois. And the thing is, I just did that so I could support my kids. I'm a speed and performance coach. When my kids first started, my daughter started in, um, my, my, my son always played soccer, just because his friends did. But I was, um, you know, I was involved in, uh, my kids were involved in little gym, and my daughter tried cheerleading and dance, and honestly, she has no rhythm, and she's a little too, she's built like a linebacker. So the, um, I'm gonna turn this music off, guys. So her, her as a uh, cheerleader, wasn't a very pretty sight. So, one day, you know, we signed her for soccer, I coached her for a season, she wasn't very good, but uh, she loved it, and kept practicing, kept getting better, and then she, uh, I was, you know, basically the play got too good for me as a coach. Signed her up for a team in Burlington, North Carolina. My buddy Steven Roberts and this dude Chris coached it. And uh, first day of practice, she cried because it was too hard. But um, she stuck with it and one game. 
She was scared, and she ran this girl over. And from then on, she's always been a top player. So I just supported her. So the key is don't try and force a sport onto your kids. Let your kids pick and choose what their passion is. I love it. You guys are wondering when we're wearing my wrists, I get this a lot. They're Versa grips. We have them at tigerfitness.com. These are the pro camo version. Um, the best damn straps you can get. So the key is to follow your kids' dreams. Don't try and create your kids' dreams. Don't do the dreaming for them. Tiger Fitness only recommends his own products. Yeah, pretty much. So gay. Well, I mean, why would, here's the deal. Simon, I'm going to kind of elaborate on this because you seem like a dick. And I really like to address dicks like you because I don't think you understand how the world works. And I would like to educate you. But I'd like to do it really in a kind way. And I'm sorry I called you a dick, but it just slipped out. I'm live. I would have edited that out if it was not live. <laughs> so I apologize already, Simon. Bottom line is when I make products, when I create products, I create them to be the best. I also know every step of the QC, the quality control, the ingredient procurement, the manufacturing. If you owned, if you were Henry Ford and you created the Model T, would you recommend another car? If you designed Tesla and you're, um, you're Elon Musk, would you even begin to say that another electric car is better than yours? Why would anybody trust in my brand and my ability to formulate if I would recommend other products over mine? I am so passionate and proud, and I've been doing this for over 20 years. This is my life's work. So you're goddamn right I don't recommend anybody else's products. They can talk about their own products, but why would I recommend other products and take money and food Money, money out of my pocket and food off my table. I work damn hard to provide for my family. If someone else wants to talk about how awesome their stuff is, that's great. But I'll be goddamn if I'm going to recommend another product over anything I've created. That's just stupid business. And it's also a lack of pride in what you do. This is a 325. This is a 55 pound bar. Simon, that's why. And if you don't like it, I will not take any offense to you um, not watching my shit. Again, life goes on, oh blah dee, oh blah da. You can shop with another company. I completely understand. But that's just what I do. And I'm not changing. Because I have too much pride in what I do. Um, what do you think about Romanian deadlifts? I'll be doing some uh, single leg Romanian deadlifts here. Tiger Fitness has the best products. You mean MTS Nutrition. <sighs> Ireland in the house. By the way, deadlifts are tiring, right? Um, I know, it's the trend. Getting my ruckus on as we speak. Hey, pal, my son plays football. He's nearly seven years old. Have you got any tips on his strength? Homeless Gavin the kinds. <laughs> um, yes, I do. At seven, focus on the beginnings of a strength program. Goblet squats, body weight squats, planks. Engage the core as much as humanly possible. Bottom line is engage the core. Engage the core, engage the core, engage the core. Kettlebell is great. If you teach a proper, proper kettlebell swing, kettlebell swing, is gonna work his hip hinge, right? Your hip hinge is critical anytime you do a squat, anytime you do a deadlift, anytime you do anything with your lower body activating your posterior chain, the hip hinge is critical. So I recommend that. 
push-ups are fine, body weight movements are fine, and hey, in about a year after doing that or less, you might be able to even um, introduce them to deadlifts, to those kind of things. But as I say, if you don't train kids, if you're not an expert at training kids, you can hurt them, which is why I recommend hiring a good trainer who is well-versed in training children. So that is my advice for you, my good friend. I appreciate you coming in here. Um, what stack would you recommend for a beginner level age 29 to build muscle and get lean? My good man, you're a beginner, which means that you need to focus on the basics. And the fact that you're just starting at 29 shows me that you're not really committed and that you don't have that long-term adherence or habit built in. What I recommend for you is simple. Whey protein to meet your protein needs. Um, I like ambrosia and nectar for overall health and wellness. And honestly, that's about it. Maybe clash for pre-workout because pre-workouts are awesome. But honestly, my advice to you is not to buy supplements. What? Mark is saying not to buy supplements? Yeah. Because it's going to be a waste of money, not because they're not going to work, but because the chance of you adhering to a program are pretty low. So I want to make sure that you buy into the diet and training part of it before investing money in supplements. Give me a good three months of consistent training and I'll give you a good supplement stack. But I want consistency. I want you to fix I want you to make sure your diet is perfect. I want you to make sure your training is perfect. All right, so here is my last workup set. My main set's gonna be 505 pounds a day. See what we got going on here. <clears throat> uh, Tiger Fitness does have quality stuff. That's really a selling point for me. Like Vaskin Clash Work, MTS Way Tastes Delicious. Thank you, Galen. Thank you, Razzy. Val, how many times should teens train each muscle group per week? Um, David, Daniel, depends on your goals and your training level. For example, if you're a soccer player, we're gonna work on posterior chain, we're gonna work on power movements to increase velocity and speed, and decrease your chance of injury. So I'll probably have you deadlift twice a week on a speed day, have you do some squats work in there, and then have you work on some overhead press and pressing movements um, to basically make sure your core and your upper body are strong enough to generate power, because remember, when you run, you're generating power from your arms. Your arms are a huge source of velocity and power. So, definitely, definitely I'd have you do that. Um, if you're training for bodybuilding, if you just want to look better in your teenager, then honestly I'd focus on the big five. Um, I would train each body part or each of the big five once a week. Just like my program states, so I would do a day with squats as your main lift, a day with bench or a chest press as your main lift, a day with overhead press as your main lift, a day with bench press as your main lift, a day with pen leg rows as your main lift, and I forgot what I, what I even said. But basically the big five lifts. You guys don't know what they are? You haven't watched my stuff. And then I do them once a week. So I hit each of the big five movements once a week train five days a week. If you can't afford five days a week, I like to push pull leg split um, for most anybody. But again, it depends on what you enjoy. Because at your age, we're just trying to develop habits. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> okay. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Um, do you listen to any fitness podcasts? No, I don't. I listen to Joe Rogan but not consistently, just when there's a guest I want to watch. I'm guessing that's how my YouTube channel is, so I don't get many views. People just watch the topic they want to listen to. 
Um, I can't watch the man dead. So I have to go dead. To some, urge to go lift dead. To some of my face. Goodbye. Goodbye to you. Mm. New flavor of MTS way. I'm not ready to announce it yet. <clears throat> MTS products are great. We'll be taking some stacks back home to Holland. Awesome. Thoughts on creatine. It's the best supplement ever. You should be taking it. MTS nutrition has Crea Pure creatine. It's like 13 bucks for 300 grams. Been taking soy for a month now. Love the products. Here's the staple in a post-workout before sleep. For a bigger deadlift, how many days a week do you recommend? Well, it depends why you're deadlifting. If you're deadlifting for powerlifting, then I would highly recommend doing it two to three times a week. But if you're an overall power lifter, you're just going for a bigger deadlift. I think one to two times a week is more than sufficient, especially if you're doing squats and other um, movements that are very um, taxing on your body and core. <clears throat> I'm gonna actually hit a little uh, kind of drop set here. Um, and this will be my final set of deadlifts. You're not hearing Katie go off with the kids? Don't do this kind of drop set with squats because you'll fall. Worst case, deadlifts, it doesn't move. So, train on your own. There are ways to do intensity sets that will beat your ass. There's one of them. No big weights, no gimmicks. It's pure dad bod shit here. Because I was going to go to the gym today, but I decided not to. Because I'm going to take my kids fishing after this. So, man, this cardio right here, guys. And I'm cardiovascular shape, a box twice a week, a ton of bike rides. Woo! Let's finish this up. Let's finish this up. Ugh. Working that posterior chain. It's all about hamstrings, back integrity, back health. This is my last set. Man, I'm 
too old for that shit. All right. Sorry about that, guys. So we got going on. Huh. Don't listen to dickhead, Mark. Parts are jits, slacking cash, and asking for a workout series bum. Using surgeon, which makes me really happy. It's my wife, my wife my wife really happy. That's awesome. Okay. What do we got? Do you train without a belt? Well, I think I pretty much just answered that one. Yeah. Ever since I had my abdominal surgeries, and the scar tissue in my stomach just make belts feel uncomfortable. They don't hurt. They just don't feel right. So I am a big fan of belts, but for me, because of my issues, my stomach, my diastases, the titanium screws, and the two torn muscles in my abs. Man, that sounds impressive when you talk about it. Um, there's absolutely no way that I can wear a belt. I tried the other day, and I have to wear it so loose um, that it's not even worth wearing it. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I can't uninjure myself, so I can't unscar tissue my stomach. You know, it's always going to have those issues. And, um, you know, you just work with it. I'm very fortunate to have done what I've done in athletics with even, with that, like, just that little bit of injury. So, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to move the way I do after all these years of doing it. So, you know, I ain't complaining. I'm very, very blessed and fortunate with my body and what it's allowed me to do throughout the years. So, ain't no complaints from me, man. I'm the luckiest man alive. Luckiest man alive. So, big fan of belts. I just can't wear them. <clears throat> uh, thoughts on Complete Nutrition as a company. Well, they sold. Um, they sold all of their... Um, stores, corporate stores remaining, um, and basically all the franchisees changed their names. So I think it was mismanaged. I think the CEO they put in charge um, had no idea how to run a business. I think they had to sell because they had a faulty business plan. And um, I really just think it was one of the most mismanaged companies I've ever seen. I tried my hardest to go in and be a great partner to them. And I feel they kind of did me a little bit wrong. Um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I still grew my company. I still got to meet a lot of people. But I do feel that the people who are in charge of it um, have no business running anything. So, but the franchisees were amazing. The employees were amazing. You know, such good people I met. You know, Mankato. Had an amazing store. Um, Sioux Falls, all those guys, Sioux City, just really good people, really nice people. Um, Omaha, hardworking, really had a good time with a lot of those guys. It's not their fault, their bosses were idiots. And, um, you know, life is what it is, man. Not every business, to business thing can go the right way. But overall, my company's growth has been completely blessed. These are going to be my Nordic curls, guys. These are hard. to your hamstrings up. Boy, I'll tell you. Huh. 
yeah, so complete nutrition, good people involved, but they've sold, so those people are gone anyway. Thoughts on growing a YouTube channel? Possibly check out mine. You gotta have, you gotta have something people wanna see. Low blinder family, keeping the inferno of energy and inspiration. Share with the world. Appreciate it, Mark. Thank you, Matthew. Do you think supplementation is essential or an aid in dieting and training? It's not essential. It helps. Diet and training are 100% of it. Supplements, that's extra credit. That's like getting an A plus in art class, turning an extra Picasso painting for extra credit. It's just bonus. What are your thoughts on MHP pre-workout? MHP is a whack-ass company, but I just don't think they make good shit. But honestly, I don't think anything compares to Clash. So why even bother? What exercise would you say contributed most to your quads? Squats. I don't even do, I'll occasionally do machines. But dude, my workouts are usually squats on squats on squats. And then I'll do pistol squats, Bulgarian split squats, and shit like that. But um, I don't fuck around with leg extensions. I mean, I used to. My best development came from squats. Squats, squats, squats. Hamstring, deadlifts, things like you're seeing here. <clears throat> Body weight movements, free weights. No, we, machines have their place, but that's not the bread and butter. Man, these burn. Oh. Yeah, they all have their place. They all have their place. <sighs> what exercise would you, okay. I know you said you have a new flavor of Clash on the way. Jeremy you see doing another bad thing? Honestly, we have unflavored and rainbow candy. Yes. I think two is good for now. My deadlift is stuck at 200 kilograms for two reps. I don't use straps or a belt. I hit 220 for 18 months ago. I haven't gotten near that. Any tips? Honestly, it's mental. If you already got the weight that was higher and you can't get it now, speaking of quads. I still got it. But, um, you know, the thing is, it's, it's a lot mental. If you hit that weight before, you can hit it now. You know, my question is, are you training for the deadlift? Like, before I give you tips on how to improve your deadlift, I would have to know what you're doing right now. See what I'm saying? So, like, I can give you tips, and it's basic shit you're already doing. You know what I mean? So before I'm able to analyze and fix, I need to know what you're doing. Generally speaking, most people just, you know, aren't using powerlifting strategies. Like if you're training like a bodybuilder and you want to increase your weight like a powerlifter, then you're going about it the wrong way. Question is, why do you want to increase your deadlift? Is it to deadlift or is it for hypertrophy? Because if it's for hypertrophy, I'm going to say, who the fuck cares? Just overload it some way. Either raise the reps, drop the weight, whatever it is. You know what I mean? One more set. So, that's the key, bro. I gotta know why you're trying to increase that weight. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's your reasoning? What's your why? Insurgent equals huge bonus. <laughs> Any tips for knee pain to do squats? Again, it's something we got to look at your form. We got to look at why you have knee pain. We got to identify it. We got to treat it. Um, or maybe you go lay off of back squats for a little bit and you move on to goblet squats, or maybe your glutes aren't activated enough. Maybe we need to get you doing some mini bands. Maybe we need to get you doing some lateral jumps to activate your glutes. Maybe we need to do some mini band training with the squat to get you to push your knee out. Question is, do you have any valgus, which is caving in of the knees, um, happening during your squat? And that's the question I need to ask before I go any further is, we need to identify why you're having the pain 
And generally speaking, we could do it through lifestyle. Maybe it's overload. Maybe you're also, here's the thing, what if you're uh, running on the street or running on a treadmill? Like, generally speaking, it's, what is it, 13 times your body weight every time you hit the ground running, right? So if you're doing that in addition to squats, the squats knee pain is not the cause, it's a symptom of what's really causing your knee pain. You guys will call me out on it. The only thing is, when you're live like this, I apologize for the camera angle. Y'all looking at my crotch the whole time. Unless that's your thing, and I'm if, it's, if it is, I'm, I guess that's cool. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at. So while I'm with these weights, let me get another question to answer. And, um, and fuck Viagra, just take in surgeon. <laughs> Viagra's good. Any tips on how I can strengthen my rotator cuffs? Eric, the question is, why do you want to strengthen your rotator cuffs? And also, what demands are you putting on your rotator cuffs? Like, if I'm a, um, if you're a pitcher, and you're already doing tremendous workload on your shoulders, um, I'm not going to have you do overhead movements. Uh, generally speaking, external, internal, rotational with a dowel, flexibility, mobility, um, scapular movements, with a kettlebell, corrective kettlebell, kettlebell correctives they call them, would be great. But again, um, you'd have to kind of see me in person and I'd have to kind of identify what your problem is. And frankly, I just don't have the time nor the resources to be able to have in-person training at this moment. I'm dedicating all my extra time that I make to training kids at my soccer club, Captain United in St. Charles, Illinois. So unless you're two ages of 10 and 18 and play soccer for Campton United, there's not much I can do for you, bro. <clears throat> um, had a bad NCL and ACL injury 10, 12 years ago. Well, there's your problem. So now you got to work on activating your glutes, strengthening your quads and your hamstrings, take pressure off of that knee. Besides cardio, which exercise is most effective for removing fat from lower abs? Now, um, Val... I'm gonna try and say this in the nicest way possible, um, but there, there is none. It comes down to diet and creating a caloric deficit and training. And frankly, you know, you need to get that down. So it's all about losing fat. Your lower abs, there's no magical exercise. There's no way to spot reduce. None of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like you just gotta fucking put it in work. So there's a single leg Romanian deadlift. no magical exercise you know like my abs are in shape because I'm in shape because I'm in shape you can't just do this one movement have you ever seen a dude with shredded abs and flabby arms you haven't because there's no way to spot reduce I apologize if this is the first time hearing that um well tell your fitness reward will there be everywhere train with you or Chris Jones no silver just costs too much money we're spending probably four grand in total travel expense. And it really like, it's just not worth our time. And also Chris has a job, I have a job. We just can't take an entire, time, entire day to train with one customer. Look for us. Chris and I will be at the Olympia. Um, we're gonna be doing meetups. I'll be at Body Power. 
Come see us, but we cannot take one day off for one person. What do you think of pistol squats with weight and high rest building legs? I love pistol squats. I think pistol squats are one of the most underrated movements on fucking planet Earth. I do pistol squats pretty much every quad day that I train at home, which is most quad days. When I first started doing these guys, I had no balance. I've been doing these for years now. Think about all this is activating. Your core, your balance, your hamstrings, your calves, your shins, your tibialis, your back, your lats, your shoulders, your arms. It's a great movement. <clears throat> Should I take in surgery at age 23? I would. I mean, I would take it from 18 plus. <clears throat> Do you think teenagers should spend a bulk of his time doing a slow bulk until his 20s? Depends, Aqua, how fat you are. I'm not gonna tell an obese dude to bulk, but if you're trying to gain weight, I would definitely wouldn't recommend getting in contest shape, but I'd recommend staying around 12 to 15%, just using that time to maximize your genetics, gain all the muscle possible. Lost two and a half pounds this week, keep rolling or have a cheat meal to get some, Here's the question, just make it so, don't, you could have a cheat meal if you want, but adjust it so you only lose one to two pounds next week. One to two pounds is sweet spot. Love your products, anything else come to Canadian market. Quentin, we don't have a distributor, nobody in Canada wants us. Nutrition Excellence just wants to carry the bars. I'd love to have a Canadian distributor, but nobody wants us up there. I'm just being real. I'll sell, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not racist against fucking Canadians. It just seems like no distributor sees the value in um, buying our products. Do you drink protein powders? What's up? Hi. We changed the pond location. We're running that one. I'm going with you. Yeah? Yeah, when I'm done. Yeah, when are you doing? Three o'clock. We're going. All right. Um, I, do I drink? I own MTS Nutrition, John. We have MTS Way. Um, I encourage you to watch some of my videos or search MTS Way on this YouTube channel. Can I buy your products in Ireland? Go to A-List Nutrition, they're in the UK. It's a very, very um, quick ship. Any Pittsburgh distributors? Well, there are no distributors per se, guys. If you're asking for a store, I don't know. The bottom line is, if you want MTS Nutrition in your store, go to your local nutrition retailer and ask them to carry it. And uh, if they don't carry it, they don't deserve your business. Plenty of places online, including Tiger Fitness, that you can order our products. So yeah, all you can do is go to the store and ask. I have no idea. We have over 400 um, retailers. So thanks for doing these chats, very entertaining and valuable. What would you consider your most valuable achievement? Um, being married, staying married, and having children, and raising them as one cohesive family unit. That's definitely my most biggest achievement. Gained over 10 pounds for 10 to 12 weeks. Fair estimate of how much is muscle and fat. I have no idea. I have no, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you've been training. You're a cuck, bro. Well, if being a self-made millionaire, a professional bodybuilder, professional strength coach, um, certified strength coach, and one who does it for a living as well as my other jobs, um, raising a family, providing. If that makes me a cuck, then what does that make you? And oh yeah, and I'm not on someone else's YouTube calling them names. Um, you're a sad, sad, I would call you a human being, but that'd be an assault to the actual human beings watching this. So Crux914, you a bitch. What's your net worth? None of your business. <laughs> Anyway, I could change my address. My order is getting shipped to. Absolutely, James. Just go ahead and email service. Service at tigerfitness.com. That's service, S-E-R-V-I-C-E, at tigerfitness.com. I think it's three or four. Okay. 
Let's see. What, so what's the MTS products on Amazon? Am I going to be able to buy them? Yeah, we're on Amazon. Um, when did you start live streaming? About 40 minutes and 36 seconds ago. Um, how to know if you have gyno? There'll be a lump. I have gyno on my left nipple. Um, from when I was a teenager, I had very high testosterone when I started training. Um, you just know. <laughs> you got like a flap in your titty. You know, you got like titties. Your nipples are big and enlarged and puffy. Um, so yeah, you have gyno when you got titties. <laughs> Now, if you're fat, you're just fucking fat, then you need to lose weight. But generally speaking, there's a difference between having fat, like man boobs, and, and having titties. Like, the difference between man boobs and titties. You know what I mean? Like, and gyno is common. A lot of guys, their testosterone increases during their teenage years. Their estrogen shoots up concurrently with their testosterone. That's how mine happened. I mean, you get pictures of when I competed naturally. I have the same gyno in my left nipple I have now. So, you know, people saying I have steroid titties and shit. I mean, they're probably right. I mean, it is something that happened with steroids, but mine wasn't for my steroid use. It actually came about when I was a teenager. And that'll be the end of this. Oh. All right, let's see. Yes, I will be collaborating with Chris. Um, it was his wife's birthday this week. So, um, girlfriend, wife. I don't keep track. Um, <laughs> so, um, as soon as he gets back to me, we'll set a date. I'm hoping to maybe bring the crew from Ambrosia with me. Um, at least Big Rob. Um, definitely... Seeing if Mike can make it. And um, let me turn this to you. I'm not going to use the music because I don't want the royalty monster to come out on me. So all those guys, all those guys, um, you know, I'm hoping to get a nice fucking, a nice, um, nice group together. You know, the bros, you know, I love those guys. It'd be cool if we got together and did some epic stuff. So I'm working on it. But I got a lot going on. I've been traveling more than I'd like lately. So, um, so you know, it is what it is. <sighs> How would someone go about focusing on flexibility in your hamstrings and hips? Um, different things. Um, there are stretches on there. Who am I focusing? Quentin. So there are stretches I would recommend doing. One is the world's greatest stretch, which is a phenomenal lift, phenomenal stretch you can do. World's greatest stretch. Um, definitely do those and focus on stretching your hamstrings, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with stretching post-workout partner assisted stretches where you sit down on your butt, reach for your toes and your partner pushes down on your back. You know, there's many things you can do. I like to, um, Spider-Man crawls. I've done videos on those. So, you know, the bottom line is you just need to honestly work on stretching, fuck, work on stretching your hamstrings is what it comes down to. I am always, I demonstrate this so many times at the soccer club a day, and I usually get it on perfect, but of course when I do it myself, I look like a friggin' infrared, friggin' idiot, but it's still moved rolling up on me. Anyway, this is a great movement. Why is it doing this today? Uh, see, this is why when you go live, it's not nearly, as pretty as we have someone edit that shit, right? All right. Squeeze. Get a nice little glute squeeze. Three sets of eight of these. Finish it off. Make sure everything's crispy. Crunchity. <sighs> Our thoughts on deadlift as a necessity as a squat and bench press with a body for a benefit? Um, no. I highly believe that the deadlift is the most, um, most important lift one can do, both as a bodybuilder and a human being. I believe it's benefit for your posterior chain and lower back health and strength are unmatched. 
by any other lift. And I believe the hex bar, not necessarily for hypertrophy, because I believe the conventional does have some added benefits for back hypertrophy, but if you're looking at getting the most bang for your buck, for the largest um, cross-section of athletes in the safest way possible, I highly believe that the hex bar deadlift is what you want to do. Um, did you do juice? Absolutely. And I'm still on HRT. I appreciate these sessions. Not too, I, oh, I appreciate it, Val. I have full on breasts. Yeah, you can get surgery if your parents are okay with it. Um, good job, Quentin. Hair is getting ripped out. Actually, no. I don't have one hair on my legs. They're all shaved. <laughs> Do you want a box, old man? You know what? You know, Redneck? You're welcome to come out to Pro Boxing Fitness in Elgin. I'll gladly go a few rounds with you in the ring. Let me know when. You have the legs of a chick. You're an anonymous guy on YouTube with no profile picture. You know, you know Redneck. Mark, M-A-R-C, at mtsnutrition.com. Feel free to come to my gym, Pro Boxing Fitness in Elgin. We'll set up a time, and I will gladly spar your ass any fucking day of the week. From me to you. The higher you get in weight, the bigger your nipples look. Okay. What do you think about SARMs? My problem with SARMs, Shymane, and I've done a huge amount of content on this, is that uh, they're, not, they're not for human consumption. They're research chemicals. So they're not made in GMP facilities, which means that you don't even know what's in that bottle. I think any company selling SARMs, um, they're not good people. They're breaking the law. They're getting adulterated and misbranded supplements from China, um, ingredients from China and they're manufacturing in non-GMP facilities. So I have no respect for anybody manufacturing SARMs because they're putting customers in danger because they're adult, they, you don't know what's in them. You can't legally ship SARMs overseas. You can't do it. You can't do it because they're, they're, they're not approved. So they're misbranding it, mislabeling it, buying it from wherever the cheapest source they find in China, and they're putting people at risk. I don't mind SARMs as an ingredient. I'm not saying they don't work. They absolutely have application in science. But, you know, it's the supply and the safety and the quality control of it that bothers me. So my problem with SARMs isn't inherently the ingredients. It's the fact there's no quality control, no peace of mind. And you have no idea who's selling it. Upskirt! Okay. So, uh, that's my workout. Why? Because it's been 48 minutes of straight work and um, I'm gonna go fish with my kids. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I appreciate everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching me. Um, I have a big day tomorrow. I'm gonna meet up with Seth again. We're gonna try and transform his life even more. He's done a full week on the diet. He's already down a pound or two. And, um, you know, 